Hello everyone, welcome back to day two of spoiler season for Kaldheim. We get some pretty interesting cards here. I'm already loving the set. First card here is a red mythic, gold span dragon, five mana, four four dragon flying in haste. Whenever gold span dragon attacks or becomes the target of a spell, you create a treasure token and treasures you control have tapped to sacrifice this artifact, add two mana of any one color. So pretty much a mana doubler for your treasure tokens if that's your strategy, if you get a lot of those normally. This is just going to make that kind of strategy so much better. And we get some uncommons here. I don't think they're really that big of a deal. We get Giant's Amulet. One blue artifact. When it enters the battlefield, you get to pay four mana. If you do create a 4-4 Giant Wizard creature token, then attach Giant's Amulet to it. The equipped creature gets plus one toughness, and it has hexproof as long as it's untapped. We get Calamity Bearer. Four mana, red Giant. Giant Berserker, 3-4. If a giant source you control would deal damage to a permanent or player, it deals double that damage to a permanent or player instead. I believe this was already kind of spoiled early. It's a pretty cool damage doubler for giants, and I love giant tribal. It's not a very deep tribe, but this is definitely going to add to it and make it a lot stronger. We get a land, Brightegard Stronghold. Enters the battlefield tapped. You can tap it for one green mana, and it has an activated cost of three and tap. One green and two white in the ability. Sacrifice Bredegard Stronghold. Put a plus one plus one counter on each of up to two target creatures you control. They gain vigilance and lifelink until end of turn. You activate this ability only anytime you could cast a sorcery. And then we have another saga card. We're bringing sagas back. Forging the Tyrite Sword. First two lore counters, you get a treasure token. And then the third lore counter, you search your library for a card named Halvar, God of Battle. Or an equipment card, reveal it, put it into your hand, and then shuffle your library. So it helps you to get another god from the set, which is pretty sweet. I like how you can have cards that search for other cards. I like Festering Newt, Bog Brew Witch, Bubbling Cauldron. Anything like that is just super flavorful to me and I love it. We get Raven Form, 3 mana blue sorcery, exile target artifact or creature. Its controller creates a 1-1 one, one blue bird creature token with flying. Has Foretell of 1, you pay 2 mana and then later on you can pay 1 blue. So that's actually not bad for a common. We get another saga, the Trickster's God Heist, 4 mana, blue black. First lore counter, you may exchange control of 2 target creatures, already sounding pretty good. Second lore counter, you may exchange control of 2 target non-basic non-creature permanents that share a card type. So you just keep exchanging control, and the third lore counter target player loses 3 life and you gain 3 life. So really just about exchanging things. We get Path to the World Tree, 2 mana green enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, you search your library for a basic land card, reveal it, and put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. Has an activated ability of 7 mana, including one of each color in the cost. Sacrifice Path to the World Tree. You gain 2 life and draw 2 cards. Target opponent loses 2 life. Path of the World Tree deals 2 damage to up to 1 target creature. And you create a 2-2 green boar creature token, so that's pretty much just giving you 1 from every color. One pretty good ability there. And then we get a cool Planeswalker, Tyvar Kel. Get a look at the extended art there. For a static ability, it has elves you control, tap for one black. Plus one, put a plus one, plus one counter on up to one target elf, untap it against death touch until end of turn. The zero is create a one, one green elf warrior creature token. And the minus six, the alt, you get an emblem with whenever you cast an elf spell, it gains haste until end of turn and you draw two cards. So that can be a pretty powerful alt if you're in the right kind of elf deck. You just keep drawing into more elves, they keep tapping for more mana. Just more synergies for elves, I guess. And then we get another one of these gods, which are pretty cool because they either transform into creatures or something else. This time we have Kolvori, God of Kinship, and she flips into the Ring Heart Crest, which I believe you can play either side. It's not like the old flip cards from Innistrad where you had to flip on a condition like the werewolves. So for 4 mana, you get a 2-4 Legendary God. As long as you control 3 or more Legendary creatures, she gets plus 4, plus 2, and has Vigilance. She has an activated ability of 2, and tap. Look at the top 6 cards of your library. You may reveal a Legendary Creature card from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest onto the bottom of your library in a random order. We have Ringheart Crest. For 2 mana, you get a Legendary Artifact. As the Ringheart Crest enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. You can tap to add 1 green mana. Spend this mana only to cast a creature spell of the chosen type or a legendary creature spell. So worst case scenario, it's just a two mana mana rock. Hellstorm Valkyrie, four mana snow creature angel wizard. That's a really cool creature type. 
Flying Trample for two snow mana. It gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. We get Sculptor of Winter. It can tap to untap a target snow land. Cosmos Charger, four mana blue horse spirit. Three, three flying flash. Foretelling cards from your hand costs one less and can be done on any player's turn. And you can also foretell it for three mana. Coma's Faithful, a 3-1 lifelink. When it dies, each player mills three cards. Village writes one mana as an additional cost to cast a spell, sacrifice a creature, and then you draw two cards. So that's another reprint. We have Seize the Spoils, three mana. As an additional cost to cast a spell, discard a card. You draw two cards and create a treasure token. And this is probably the coolest card that we're going to see today. That is Iska, God of the Tree. So she is three mana. 1-4 Legendary God. Vigilance taps to add one mana of any color. Other legendary creatures you control have Vigilance and tap to add one mana of any color. But you could play the Prismatic Bridge for five mana, one of each color. At the beginning of your upkeep, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a creature card or planeswalker card. Put that card onto the battlefield and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. So I'm really liking this idea of having a commander option that you can just flip into something else, which is something I've always wanted to do with some really good enchantments that were legendary enchantments was just make a commander deck around them. Sort of have like commander, but with a non-creature. And then we get Coma Cosmos Serpent. 7 mana, green, blue, legendary serpent, a 6-6, this spell can't be countered. At the beginning of each upkeep, create a 3-3 blue serpent creature token named Coma's Coil. Sacrifice another serpent to choose one of two modes. Tap target permanent, its activated abilities can't be activated this turn. Or Coma Cosmos Serpent gains indestructible until end of turn. So that's pretty sweet. This kind of reminds me of that boss battle from Sekiro. Some massive serpent. Pretty cool. Alright guys, so as I refresh, we got a new card coming in here. The World Tree. Land. It enters the battlefield tapped. It taps for green. As long as you control six or more lands, lands you control have tap to add one mana of any color. It has a massive ability of ten mana, two of each color. Tap and sacrifice the World Tree. Search your library for any number of god cards. Put them onto the battlefield, then shuffle your library. Holy cow! <laughs> actually pretty easy to get to when you think about it especially when you have a way to make it so that all of your lands tap for one of any color you just have to get to 11 total lands and you have pretty much a win con here i can't imagine that if you get a lot of your gods out there it's not god specific so you can get a lot of those indestructible ones from theros get perforos out there <laughs> that is a recipe for disaster and i love it but anyway, guys, let me know what you think about this pretty good tree here being spoiled. You all have a wonderful day. Void here signing off. See you all next time.